Okay, thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This was my last Skyscape um, stamp sketch uh, composition that I did um, in, I think it was starting in video 260 or something like that. But this one is one that I saved for a separate video in terms of adding in my little flourishes, okay? Flourishes meaning uh, these light beams right here and uh, the gel pen work, you know, adding in these little flares and whatnot and kind of reiterating the idea of um, kind of light emanating from my given source right here. Um, I used a few different inks in this um, scene, okay, in terms of those marks that I was just talking about. Um, I happen to have um, some different, I didn't use this one, um, different brands of pads, okay, and they kind of represent kind of different opacities, you know, with the color box ones being a little bit more transparent or translucent, the hero arts being a little bit more opaque, and then the brilliance being really opaque, and I utilize the characteristics of each one of these pads for different areas within kind of these marks like these beams, um, just as an experiment. I wanted to see what it would look like, to, you know, for a beam to transition. I, didn't, I wasn't really that effective with that. I, I think I need to make it more apparent that these beams are a little bit more yellow or something like that and transitioning than just white and used heavier in here and lighter out here. I don't, I don't feel I, I made any use of these, but you can kind of see it a little bit though. And what I mean by that is you have this beam right here that is a little bit more solid, right? And these ones kind of transition, all right? Where you can see the background uh, a little bit more clearly, okay? And that's where I've used more of like these types of colors over in this area, okay? And I kind of like that. I like that kind of transitioning right there. And plus it's a little bit darker and it gets a little bit lighter where the light is. So it's, you know, as the beam comes at us, it becomes weakened a little bit, which is kind of nice because we get that variation over here. But I need to play around with it more, but my little uh, glowing little balls of light kind of add to the overall textural scheme of the scene. And uh, I don't know, it kind of makes the scene a little bit more fun. And during the, uh, the middle of this scene, or not maybe not in the middle of this video, what I do is I go and I spray seal it, and I think the colors became much more deeply saturated, more akin to what it would look like in a freshly colored scene when the dye based inks are still a little wet. So it's the great equalizer between brands, different brands of inks and paper um, stocks that you might be using. You just kind of spray seal it with a clear acrylic spray, and it brings back the saturations of all of these different types of inks if your inks dry when they become a little bit more, you know, uh, those types of marks become a little bit more dull. Okay? So just spray seal it and it will bring it all back. All right, so anyways, some fun little flourishes here. And what began as a composition like this, you know, as the sun coming out from over the clouds and we're at, I don't know, like 40,000 feet or something like that. And watching this spectacular thing. I, I kind of like it like this, like this is almost like a planet right here, like a gaseous planet, like a Jupiter or something like that. And this is like a sun in the distance and I don't know. Uh, I think that's kind of a neat uh, look to it, you know, with the clouds down here. So anyways, if you choose to watch this video, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I don't know, I'm kind of a little fumbling around uh, trying to figure out what I'm doing in this video because I haven't done this technique before of uh, trying to use different colored uh, pigment inks to uh, to render one given beam, you know, so um, anyway, um, fun results, kind of a bumbling process for me to try to explain it uh, as I'm going because I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't know. It was fun. That's really what it's all about when we're stamping, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I guess we want results, too. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning into the channel. And again, hope you enjoy it. Okay, I'm 
kind of ready for an adventure here um, as far as the process or application that I'm going to attempt here. It's some um, something that's uh, a version of what I've already done, but um, uh, I've been kind of pondering whether I can change it a little bit. And what I'm talking about is adding some light beams emanating from this sun right here in the form of these crepuscular rays, they call them, those light beams that are kind of coming kind of right towards you in um, some like a perspective uh, type of, uh, oh, I don't know, what angle, I guess you can say. Now, what I'm referring to as far as a change goes is I've been doing them strictly in white pigment ink, but now, um, unbeknownst to me, I, well, I just ordered this one too, but uh, I completely forgot that I had these transitions of uh, different colors here that are kind of in the spirit of this color scheme right here. And I also have now the Brilliance and uh, Hero Arts um, unicorn pads here. I just realized this is hero hues on here. So anyways, I'm going to try to, uh, apply these inks in, um, transitioning values and I guess hue, meaning I don't want just a, a you know, a static white beam coming out of here. Um, we'll see what it looks like, um, using some colors. Now, I think right next to the sun, since it's white, okay, those beams will be white and they'll just transition, or as it starts to transition out, I'll just get um, a little bit darker. So here's the thing, I don't really know um, how or what to do in, as far as my approach to this. I don't know whether I should work from, you know, dark to white, or if I should start with the white and work darker. I have a feeling maybe that I should work from dark to light because I supply as I apply the ink uh, I think it'll just transition better than if I put a yellow down then I put something dark next to it I think I'll, that transition between the two might be a little bit stark so but I don't know uh, we'll see I, I have a feeling I'll be going back and forth on this but we'll see if I can do this right here it's uh, I haven't really transitioned uh, pigment inks before. I, well, I guess I have it transitioned a little bit, but not in terms of a change of hue. I've just used kind of a thicker application of some pigment ink, which is going to be a little bit more um, opaque, and then as I kind of thin it out, it's more translucent, but, and thus lighter, but we'll see how this works with um, Kind of different tones. Okay, now this is the cloud with sun large here, and I'm going to try to. Um, I'm laying down my paper. Now let's see here. Let me work from up here, so you can see it. Um, kind of just figure out where these beams should go, I guess, <laughs> before I lay these out. Okay, I'll have a beam coming from right here. Okay, coming down this way. Kind of, yeah, it's like, I, I need to decide where I want the beams, too, so I don't, yeah, I don't know that either. So, uh, we're back to kind of a, kind of a new experiment here. All right, now, in order for this, I don't know if I want that beam that big. Let's try this right here. All right, so it'll be like that. All right, now I'm not going to take these down or anything. Um, it might be easier, you know, to do that, but uh, I think I'm just going to hold it here. I don't know, I'll see if, I'll see what works, you know. We're, we're just uh, kind of experimenting here, so let's see. Maybe I'll put some pigment in, maybe these will hold the paper down over here, I don't know. All right, so uh, working from Kind of, I don't know. Maybe that yellow is going to be too yellowish. Uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. Gosh. All right. 
So let's, let's hold off on this super bright yellow right here. It might stand out too much. Let's go with the hero. Hero, uh, hue. Uh oh. I don't remember which color is which here. Is that on the back? Yeah. Alright, this one's the amber. Okay, let's see how this goes. Um, I'll bet these are. I'll, I'll bet you I never used these pads before. Because I didn't even know I had them. I don't. I don't see a single impression in there, so. I don't know. I probably bought it with something in mind, but I don't recall what it was. And I don't have a ton of pigment inks, but um, I have them in certain colors, certain hue. Alright. This one I can see is probably going to be too dark. I don't see much of a change that's happening, so I'll probably have to transition up into... Um, well, let me see. Let me see this right here. Yeah, I mean, I can't see anything. So, let me go lighter, okay? So, and I'll just use the same uh, Q-tip. I think I plotted it out too much. It's a little bit too flat. I want it kind of smashed, but not to the point where I'm kind of picking up that little, whatever, cardboard post. Okay, now this one's a little bit better. It's almost too light, so I'll just kind of try to uh, blend that out a touch. All right, this is the Canary um, color box. Pigment ink. Okay, now pigment ink. Um, as far as the color box ones, they don't dry very fast, <laughs> so you really have time to manipulate it. Okay, so it could look kind of blobby, and as long as you keep kind of working it, it should kind of blend nicely. Alright, let me get this amber one out of the way. If the scene got darker there, that amber one probably sh would probably show up and it would be applicable, but... Uh, it's not that dark of a scene or background around where, I, oops, where I'm applying it. Okay. Alright, now the nature of kind of these beams is... Uh, you know, I do want it to transition, so I don't want it super blobby. I want it to be a little bit more, you know, some, some somewhat translucent. Okay, so you can see that's what's going on underneath it. All right, transitioning up. I think that's enough of that tone. But if I want to get a little bit lighter, um, I'll move up to the unicorn pastel yellow okay by hero hues hero arts hero hero arts hero hues okay i mean this could you could use uh just all white you know if you want to I think that looks good too, but I don't know, we're just trying to, you know, I'm always trying to tweak things and push things a little bit further in terms of a given technique. I always want to kind of test the limits of, uh, you know, a medium's capabilities. You know, you want something to allow that medium to be uh, kind of the best that it can be in a given situation. And, uh, We'll see how this goes. Okay, now that yellow is not going to get any lighter, I don't think. You know, the more I use it, it's just staying about the same value down there. So that's when you know to move up to your next um, hue or value. Let's try the Hero Arts Unicorn 
it's just called unicorn. I guess when it's a color, it's called unicorn something. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Because this one's just called unicorn. All right, I don't want to pollute that white, so let me just switch out to a new tip here. And I'll go fairly dense um, near the sun, the source, and just kind of working this back. Okay, and what I do, I do is when I move into the areas where it's supposed to be a little bit darker, what I'm doing is I'm using the lighter touch, and maybe I'll go for just like one side of the beam, okay, or something. So it's a little bit heavier. Okay, I use my finger, <laughs> yeah. My finger is my kind of blending tool as well. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay. All right, that's my one beam. See how it transitions a little bit? There's a different color and there's a different color down there. I mean, it looks totally weird right now because it's the only one, but <laughs> I get, it's kind of what I'm going after. Let's see. See that right there? And it, it's a different color, so... Uh, let's see what it'll look like um, kind of more in context, okay? So let's define more light rays, okay? And I would kind of vary them a little bit, you know, have some of them a little bit larger, some a little bit smaller in terms of their width. Crepuscular rays um, are, uh, believe it or not, they're, um, they don't look parallel to me, but I have this book on um, weather and uh, So weather is it clouds? I don't know. I have a couple of them. Atmosphere, I think, and the field guide to North America, where I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. And uh, okay, now this is the, uh, the unicorn yellow. I'm using that one because like, this ray isn't going to be quite as long. But um, in those books, those crepuscular rays, they show them coming through trees or down from clouds and. You know, understand perspective, single point perspective, and you know how things can kind of emanate from somewhere. But um, they're parallel. The beams are parallel and not kind of angled. It seems kind of weird. You know, like a movie projector. I mean, that's you know the lens is that big, and you know it projects on the gigantic movie screen, but. Um, you think that's the same type of thing that's in effect, but it, uh, I don't know. They say over and over in the book that it's, that these are parallel. <laughs> so I kind of trust them. Okay, here comes the white. So this one's, this beam's kind of built out of white and yellow. Okay, so a little bit heavier handed towards the light source, and then as you move out, a little bit lighter touch, okay? And that way you can have it transition, so you get a varied application of that media, okay? All right, coming around, is that yellow down there? I think it looks, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. It's, uh, <laughs> maybe it's, uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated of a, of a light beam. Okay. All right, you can do real thin ones too if you want to. Um, okay. Yeah, but 
Yeah, just try to vary the width, I, I think, of some of them. I think it won't be so monotonous. All right, uh, let's go for the canary again. Looks like I'm on a canary. Um, Hero Arts Unicorn Pastel Yellow, just because it's real light. And the unicorn, just unicorn white, they're basic white there. For some reason, I get a big kick out of uh, adding things like this. This uh, um, these light beams. Maybe just because I, you know, it's fairly new. I get you're always kind of interested in, you know, seeing something new develop before your eyes. That uh, it's like, I mean, if it's effective, you know, if it doesn't look good, then no. But uh, but if it's effective and it you know, it just does the job, it's it's always a real pleasure. Kind of a doing something like that. It's you know it's just taking your medium and uh, kind of allowing it to be something you know that you just haven't utilized it for before. And it just, I don't know, brings kind of a new dimension into uh, whatever thing that you're, you're doing. So kind of a light touch, you know. When doing these things, okay, it's kind of coming around. See that? It kind of fades out down here too, which is which is okay. Right, maybe I can add a little bit more, but I don't know. I think it, you know, I think it can look pretty dramatic too. All right, my beams are looking a little bit too um, they're too similar in terms of width even though I kind of had that in mind I'm still I don't know I'm still like a habit or something like that all right let me make a real skinny one like that oops sorry like that that one's real skinny oops I'm using my white tip there Okay, back to the canary. I know this one's real thin, so maybe I'll make it. I'll try to. I'll see if it works. If, I'll, if I can make it a little bit more translucent, or you know, kind of dark. Not real dark, but just a little bit darker than the other beams. You know, maybe it's, you know, just, I don't know, that area is not emanating, you know, quite as light as the other areas. You know, so you kind of make a weak beam, you know, go along with the lighter beams for variation. Yeah, something like that. See that right there. How many do you do? I don't know. No idea. 
we'll just have to keep doing it. I mean, I, I'd probably know more about what I kind of was going after if uh, if I had some land imagery or some trees or something like that to, to build around in here, but I, I don't, so we'll just have to uh, kind of figure it out as we go, you know. You look at the beam, or look at what you've done, and, uh, you know, the next step will reveal itself at that time. We don't have to kind of have a an idea of it, you know, beyond uh, kind of what we're working on at the moment, so. I always say, it, you know, you don't have, it doesn't have to be a kind of a, a mental, you know, note as much as it is like a a visual response to what exists. That way things are kind of left open. And you can just, you know, make your next uh, decision accordingly rather than kind of predetermined. Okay, switching to the uh, unicorn, yellow. So you can just kind of put it on one side of the beam too and try to blend that in slightly. Or not really blend it in, but transition it into the darker one. All right, let's see. Okay. Well, you can accuse these kind of a light beam type of a... Uh, um, marks or whatever, um, these rays to be, uh, I don't know, undramatic, <laughs> is that a word? Um, the question is, is just how many do we want, okay, and something like this with the sun like that, you can add as many as you want, that's the thing. I, I don't think I want to add too many. Let's let's try a couple that are just maybe just yellow, you know, so they're a little bit darker. And uh, don't stand out quite as much. Let's try it with the canary. Oops, again, I have that white on there. Okay, so much for that. Switch up. Let's go with the canary. Let me zoom out so you can see what's going on here. Too much of that white got on there. Just wipe it right off. Comes right off. subtle beam right here. Okay, and we'll come out here maybe. Maybe not. I don't want to do it all the way around to where it's just, you know, kind of this monotonous thing going on in there. Okay, let me switch things so I don't make the, the mistake of... I think there's white on there. Where's a clean Q-tip? All right. I have plenty of Q-tips 
and I keep saying, I usually stay away from brands, but uh, just, I don't know, go with something that's cotton. Otherwise it's too stiff. You want, you want them to kind of fray and, you know, get real, you know, kind of soft and, I don't know, kind of destroyed. So that you're working, if you want a soft application of something, then you need a soft applicator. Okay, let's try the canary. If you drag it, it you'll wipe the ink off, okay? So you kind of use a tapping motion, I find. One of the things, too, with this that I will keep in mind is if it looks too light, I know that when I spray seal this, they will look more transparent, you know. So it won't be quite as stark, which may or may not be good. It means you have to kind of take things a little bit further than you think you'll need to or than you'll want to. And then you spray seal it, and then, uh, you know, some of that um, contrast that you're creating will kind of mellow out a little bit. But I do like what I see, and I like I'm, um, looking forward to trying this out in the scene. Okay, now if you're doing a scene that's kind of, you know, maybe more blue or something like that, in spirit, maybe you're doing moonlight or anything like that, then, you know, use the, uh, you know, the colors accordingly. Choose your colors uh, accordingly. Kind of stick with the colors out of your color scheme, you know, to to uh, to do your beams, you know, because uh, if there's colors in your color scheme or of a given color, you're saying that that's the the color of the light being cast within that uh, composition. Okay, so there we go. See, some of these that are a little more subtle look pretty good, I think. All right, maybe up here I'll just do one, just so it doesn't look, look like a, I don't know, bicycle scope or something. Kind of reminds me of some music videos, you know, back in the day. Kind of the first music videos, they didn't know what they were doing, so they just kind of did anything. And, you know, they might have like a, one of those laser things coming from behind someone, you know, some singer. Or something like that. All right, now I can't tell you what color this is. I thought it was uh, canary, but I think there was some white on this one. I don't know. I keep making that mistake here. Okay, tapping some of it off, making it a little bit more translucent again, or uh, transparent, sorry. Okay, that's, this here's canary. Let's just go with the canary there, let's stay away from that light. Too dark, or too light right there, too much contrast, so let's take some of it off. This is my great inexpensive pigment ink removers here. Your God-given ink removers, beam alterations. You yeah, see that right now? It's a lot more subtle. All right, we do need another one though. That looks kind of weird right there. It's kind of 
off a touch, I think. So let's get an intermediate one going in here. I'll try to maybe I'll try to make it as thin as possible. Kind of a hairline area. I think I should work it from the inside out. That way I can kind of taper it at the end rather than going out here and then working it in. You want it to kind of be lighter towards the light source and lighter out here so okay, I can just kind of wipe some of it off though and you know remove some of that ink. That's okay. Okay, so here we go. It's kind of interesting. It certainly gives it a little bit of dimension, or a lot. It almost looks, uh, it almost looks three-dimensional, doesn't it, in a way? Okay, now let me go do something here. Um, I think what this can stand is um, a little bit of a an opacity um, boost with the use of some brilliance ink. Okay, the brilliance is going to be a little bit more um, opaque and fast drying than the other brands. Okay, this one's known to kind of dry on glossy cardstock or, or really wherever it can dry on glossy and then it can dry uh, somewhere else. But what I'm going for is I want things to be a little bit more opaque in here and then as it transitions out it's less opaque. So I want the brightest area to be around or the lightest area to be around my light source. You know? And that will kind of reiterate what's going on visually which is the light is coming from my light source. Okay so let's try that here. should probably cut these papers in half or something like these are too big. Okay. Try to match that up. Oops. Alright, these have yellow on it. Let me see. Okay, that set looks clean. I'm going to use a clean one. Okay, now, remember not to get real heavy-handed with this one now. And then this is, again, this is um, Brilliance, and it's the Moonlight White color. I might not do this on all of them, but we'll see. Here, I'll zoom in. Can you see that? It's a little bit more opaque. Oops, I touched that. That's a little bit more opaque there, and it, as it moves out, it's darker, but even amongst the white area, it's a lot more opaque. Okay, so I did it about this far. But I transitioned it though. I don't just have, pick, you know, brilliance to here and then stop. It's kind of here and then it tapers off there. So what I do is I just do, you know, I tap that ink on in a much lighter tap, I guess, tapping motion or whatever. And plus, by the time I get over there, a lot of the ink has been kind of removed in the lighter portion just from, oops, sorry. Um, 
in the lighter areas so that by the time I move out here into these other areas there's kind of a less ink on here so less is being applied and that way you get that nice transition okay that see that beam right there and that beam have received the treatment okay let's do it around you know some of these ones okay so it's I don't know it's kind of fleshing this out you know as we kind of uh, I don't know develop it here develop uh, the process I mean tell it right here but there's a little bit of a change in value okay I think it looks pretty good on these um, so far I'm thinking I could probably almost do it on all of them just you know don't take it out quite so far if you want the beam to be somewhat um, you know, more subtle, okay? But where it emanates from, I want it to be fairly obvious and, uh, you know, stark right next to the light source. I, I think that'll give it more of a kind of a flare type of thing, you know, that emanating light. I need to move this up, sorry about this video. Anytime I'm kind of really not knowing what I'm doing in these videos, which is a lot of them, granted, but uh, I'm kind of not as aware of the camera position, whatnot. I feel it's becoming a stronger piece now. Okay, let's go even more. I need to add a little bit more around this one. Eee, there we go. Let me move all this paper up so I stop making these uh, camera framing mistakes. beam, it's lighter, more translucent. Okay.
Ooh, I actually took off quite a bit of ink there. Let's see if I move. Yeah, I took off way too much. Okay, I was going to see if it looked okay if I just kind of took off, you know, really quite a bit, but it does need to be defined there a little bit more. Okay, now I could go back to that canary, but I think I'm just going to go, well, okay. I have that tip here still, so let's go back to that, uh, or let's go back to the pastel yellow unicorn. some things now, okay? Um, I'm going to hit this area around the sun and try to make it a little bit lighter and to emphasize that as my light source, you know? If we have these such kind of these bright, heavy beams in some ways, then you're saying that the light that's creating it, the light source, is going to be a fairly light entity, so... Okay. Let's put more of this, and I'm using the Brilliance White. The whole interior here is fairly light, so... I usually start off with something a little bit more um, slow drying and uh, forgiving in a way in the form of the color box you can really remove it this when you use the brilliance it's kind of on there for good when you use it but it's so light in here so I'm going with something that's very light against um, something even lighter so it doesn't really matter if I just go right in there Kind of put it on, putting it on some of those kind of billowing clouds that are inherent in the design of the uh, cloud with sun, large. Okay. So that it's kind of that passage of uh, light in there, and I have a little bit of round on the uh, the clouds within there giving those clouds a little bit of variation in terms of value. Okay. All right, now, let's see. I'm going to do something with my gel pen, okay? You know how you see these kind of light beams, but you might see a kind of like a solar flare too. Special, especially if it's something like photography, if you aim right at the sun, you know, you'll see these flary type of uh, marks. I'm going to try and add some of those in here, okay? So, all right, let's bump you down a little bit more. All right. Add a few little highlights on some of the clouds facing my light source. This is the Uniball Signo white uh, gel pen. some highlights down here on, on my Alto Cumulus cloud. 
Look at that mackerel sky. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll put a few little dots coming from that light source. And what I do is I kind of have them a little bit more condensed than as I move out from that sun. I kind of space them out more. Maybe I'll add a little bit of a larger one sometime. See that? Maybe I could have spaced those out a little bit more. We tend to get caught into patterns sometimes, so. There, that's better, okay. All right, those are white. Let me do, um, Let's do a yellow um, mark. I'm looking for it. See if I have a uniball. I have a uniball um, pen around here somewhere. All right. I need to find it. I think. Oh. Okay, here's the uniball signet. I could use my um, shuttle art yellow, but I'm going to do something to these um, little flares as well, okay? So, just, I don't know, um, the uniball one. It's, I don't know, it's a thicker, kind of more permanent ink I'm finding, so if I put a little dab of uh, pigment ink over the top of the... Uh, the shuttle art one, it just, the shuttle art one just wipes right off of the uh, paper, so. I have to use the Signo. Signos are, oops, they're superior, but um, they cost a ton more. Not that they're not worth it. I just, I needed both. Okay, so there's a few little colored dot changes, okay? That's, I mean, that's something that's going to be fairly subtle, but, you know, I mean, if you have it, um, you know, and a lot of people have different colors of gel pens or whatnot. Uh, if you have a gold and silver pen, that would be fantastic in here as well. All right, I'm, I won't go too crazy with this. Or will I? more condensed ones towards the source, I think. some finishing touches. I should wait till it is this dry yet. I don't know if it's dry yet, but oops. 
Here's one thing about that gel, uh, the um, pigment ink is uh, down here. I have a gigantic fingerprint, my own fingerprint in that gel, so I don't know. Maybe they can identify this as mine by, oops, by that fingerprint. Let me fill that out again. Just add some more pigment ink in, into it and blend it out a little. Drying it won't make it less prone to wiping off. You really have to spray seal these. But that being said, let me get a little bit of heat on here. Paper's starting to curl a little bit, which will happen. Not a big deal. Okay, now, um, what I'll do is I'll take a, and hopefully my uh, gel pen dots are a little bit dry, or dry enough to where I can, let me get this curl out of it. You just counter bend it like this. Alright, and it's nice and flat again, kind of. <laughs> it's a little bit warped, but not a big deal. Okay, so I'm taking some of my color box, Frost White. Remember, this one's a little bit more transparent. Okay, blot it off a little bit, and we'll get, hopefully, a nice little kind of a glowing, I almost said star, because that's what I'm usually doing around, but it's kind of like a little glowing thing of light, just like a, kind of like a flare, you know, that's, you know, that flare that I mentioned, see that? And you, if you do that to a few of them, it can kind of add this nice, I don't know, this emanating light type of appearance to the uh, to the scene and it and it really varies things a little bit you know where those little dots get you know they get a little bit monotonous so you know doing something like this really changes that um, kind of overall feel and I don't know, it, it's like, I don't know, it looks kind of more natural, maybe, I don't know, um, to see something like that, you know, because we do see variation in nature. <laughs> At the same time, we're saying not every little glowing ball of light is the same. Don't forget to hit some kind of torch or light source where it's really not going to be quite as apparent, but if you just kind of have it on the perimeter, those ones kind of, they don't look as integrated as if you do some on the interior here where it's a little bit more subtle because it's, you know, there's not as much contrast. And those ones you need a little bit more ink. Okay, let's see what we have here. See that? A little dab of pigment ink, you know, can be quite effective. So we have a lot of different things going on in here now, huh? It's, uh... It's really changed kind of the spirit of the scene by having these little 
pigment and gel pen flourishes, I think. Let me, I really like those little glowing spheres, so I'm going to add some more. So hopefully it gives it kind of a... I don't think there's any of these in... Let me put a couple of these little glowy things in, in the... Uh, in the beams as well. I mean, they could be behind the beams or in somewhere in front of it, wherever. But we'll integrate that texture into those areas. Okay. Um. All right, that is too much fun. As far as the process goes. Little, little, uh, little twinklies. Okay, so. What we have is some transitioning beams in some colors. You know, it's not as stark white down here. There's a little bit of hue to it, okay? Right here. This one is somewhat similar um, from here to here, so it's not quite as extreme, but the good thing is that there's just some variation down here, okay? I mean, it's a subtle little thing. You could just use all white, too, and I think that's fine, but I don't know. You can kind of push things a little bit um, further, I think, if you play around with them, value, a touch. But see all these textures and uh, marks, highlights, etc.? Those are the types of things that can really... Um, kind of bring a scene to life and it's an easy technique okay you just put a gel pen dot down and then if you don't use too much pigment ink okay that process of adding these types of rays is going to be so much easier the thing that makes it really really hard is if you apply too much ink on these and then you're applying a big blob of ink down okay you're going for something very subtle, so what you want is uh, something that's going to be applied like, um, I don't know, subtle shock or something like that. But uh, I know women should be better at it than guys. To you're familiar with doing like makeup, okay? You don't want like a, you know, put a, on like a, I don't know, whatever foundation like you know would go on like lipstick or something like that <laughs> that's a bad analogy but i don't know what i'm talking about when it comes to something like that but that's the analogy you're kind of putting like more like a powdered form on even though these are a liquid ink the application of it is going to be much more subtle like you're put, applying a powdery substance on something like a pastel or that type of thing okay and that's where you do it. You build it up from that type of uh, consistency. Don't go on there with something too hard, otherwise it's harder to manipulate and uh, it goes on very quickly, where you want this to be a kind of a slower process. 
All right, so this is what it looks like now, but let me do kind of a before and after um, with a, uh, um, I'll use a Krylon uh, spray sealant over the top of this. And I have a feeling that these beams won't be quite as apparent, but I'll hit it on the outside edge and we'll see if we can kind of bring out the vibrancy of this a little bit. So let's see. Gonna zoom in about like so. Let me mark where I've put this and I will place this down on the same location after I spray it and we'll see if we can see any difference. I have a feeling that we will. Okay, so uh, to the spray, I need to do this outside. You never spray seal anything inside or use something inside because of the, uh, the scent of it. Okay, we're back. Um, I think as far as, uh, <laughs> I think it's hard for me to tell because I just sprayed it, but I think it looks um, a little bit more deeply saturated than before the sprain, okay? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, right? I'll have to review it on this video, but... Um, I believe the saturations became much more deep and uh, transparent. I'm surprised that I retained as much of the uh, the pigment ink as I did. I thought that that would have been lost with the sprain, but it's still there and I think it looks pretty good. Um, and as far as the pigment ink on there goes too. But I don't know, I mean, when I started this series off in terms of the spa uh, sky um, figures, what I wanted to do is depict kind of deep space within a given area. And these are just supposed to be um, kind of examples of what you can have going on in your sky. Um, so we can put something like this around trees or a forest or a lake or something like that, you know, and do these types of things and have this amount of um, depth within just one area of a given scene, okay? But you can see right in here, when you play around with uh, different textures and shapes, you can kind of create that depth within a given space. Let me just show this right here so you can see the whole thing. But, you know, having um, that amount of uh, transitioning with your tones, okay, that also creates this um, deep amount of space. And then of course, if you lay something like, you know, these little highlights, okay, these little light balls or whatever you would call them, um, those can create an additional layer of depth within a given space, okay, because it likes, looks like they're hovering, so they're something in between you and the background, okay? And of course these, I don't know, these light beams going back in perspective, you know, they're narrower and they kind of get thicker towards you. I mean, if anything says um, kind of a, a distance, you know, lines going back into perspective would be certainly be one of those things you can add as a kind of a spatial vehicle in your uh, scene. So, um, you know, this as far as an experiment goes, you know, I like the transitions in here with the different tones, okay? The certain type of um, pigment used going from something that's uh, fairly transparent to something a little bit more <laughs> uh opaque and then this which really isn't opaque but it's a little bit more opaque than the other ones i should say transparent i don't know translucent a little bit more translucent you know or opaque i don't know whatever but um playing around with these different colors as well there's the canary uh, that i found useful and then something like a, just a yellow. This one happens to be a pastel yellow. I think this this one would have been too bright, I think, in here, okay? Maybe I could use it around here where there's that degree of yellowness, but I'm not sure what that would look like here. Might be okay, though. 
So you can play around something like that, but um, the amber was just definitely too dark. I don't know, but, uh, you know, I, this is my first one, so I need to play around with it. But maybe the amber over here, where that beam right there could trans, uh, um, um, transition between uh, white and dark, or more translucent, whatever. But having those beams kind of vary, I think, helps on the idea of pushing depth, so it's a lot more opaque and light around the light source, and as it moves out, you're transitioning it into kind of, eventually it would be transparent and you wouldn't be able to see it anymore, maybe, so. Um, that all kind of helps there, so as far as the uh, aspect of depth goes, you know, playing around with something like that can make your light beams uh, slightly more sophisticated, perhaps, I don't know. Um, but, is it worth the trouble? I don't know, you know. I think the beams of light look good uh, before uh, on some other scenes, but um, I don't know. It's definitely uh, something to kind of uh, test more and to, uh, I don't know, kind of play around with. It's certainly fun to try these things. And... I don't know, I'm just seeing if this one could, could potentially... This one, that, that looks kind of cool. This looks like a different planet here, like, say, uh, I don't know, Jupiter or something like that, you know, kind of the... or Mercury, a cloud-covered planet, and that could be like a sun coming out. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. It's more uh, spacey. Now, this can be kind of like Earth, you know, or something like that, where you're, you know above the clouds or something like that. I don't know if you'd see all those little flares and stuff like that, but uh, I don't know. I kind of like this though. That says, this is like space and this is just like sky, our sky, you know, when you're above the clouds or whatnot. But I don't know. We'll figure it out. I kind of like that though. Anyway, more fun things to do and inspect and to play around with in stamping so hope you enjoyed it <laughs> thanks for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions drop us a note in the comment section and have some fun <laughs>